没人，那边没人，老娘一头干。Senator Bond. Yeah. It was so nice to see you. We're very pleased you could be with us. Thank you all for doing that to me. Thank you very much for coming. I have to go to New Jersey, but I wanted to come by and pay my respects. Thank you very much.
Yeah. 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 Yeah
Yes, yes. So they can start the program now. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Chris, let's go. 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 Okay, I read it 54 years ago, and Emily Hahn was my mother's best friend. Oh, and it's a wonderful book. Oh, I don't know. I would like to read it again and again. If you would like to have it, yes. I don't have any. I have any no more. I'll get you another one. Pardon? I'll get you another one. Make a well, copy for you. Well, Emily was my mother's best friend, and she wrote this when the war was still on. It's a beautiful book. How are you? I'm a great lifelong friend of James Baxter Johnson. His wife, Nelson Pressler Johnson. It's my privilege now to introduce Miss Nancy Chen, who is in charge of my Chicago office. Madam Chen, Senator Simon, Senator Dole, members of Congress, and distinguished guests. Good afternoon. I'm Nancy Chen, co-chair of the U.S. China Reception Committee for Madam Chang. It is my great honor to welcome all of you to this congressional reception to honor Madam Chiang Kai-shek, the former First Lady of China, and also to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the end of World War II. As a Chinese American woman, I'm especially honored to be part of this occasion to honor one of the most admired women in Chinese history as well as in the world. Today's event marks a half a century since Madam Chang's visit to the U.S. Congress in 1943. Her speeches before the Senate and the House on February 18, 1943, galvanized the support of the U.S. Congress and the American people for greater assistance to China in the war against Japan. The New York Times reported that the next day that she smiled, spoke, and conquered. Madam Chang captured the hearts of the American people during that visit. The reception committee would like to thank you for coming from far and near to be with her at this historic event and to honor her contributions to freedom and peace. Among us are many distinguished guests from Taiwan. In particular, I would like to recognize Mr. Hao Boshun, the former premier of Taiwan. We would also like to thank Senator Simon and Senator Dole for serving as honorary chairs and the 29 senators for serving on the host committee. Your support means a great deal to Madam Chang and her family, and you have helped make this event possible. I would also like to extend my sincere thanks to my co-chair, Dr. Chi Wang, who is probably somewhere here, and all on the reception committee for all your hard work in making this event a great success. At this point, I would like to invite Senator Simon 
to give his welcoming remarks and to introduce Madam Chang. As you know, Senator Simon has been a great friend of the Chinese American community. His ties to Chinese people date back to the 1920s when his parents were missionaries in China. He was born a month after his parents returned from Sichuan, China. Senator Simon was raised in a home where Chinese and Asian visitors were frequent guests. His parents were voices of tolerance and understanding in their communities. So it was natural that Senator Simon would become a forceful voice in the United States Senate for Chinese Americans as well as all Americans on equality and justice. Let's welcome Senator Simon. Thank you, Nancy, Madam Chung, and distinguished guests all. And we have many distinguished guests, and I don't want to, to single out any, but we do have the uh, daughter of a former president of the United States and uh, her husband, Tricia no uh, Nixon Cox. And President Nixon was planning to go to Taiwan a month after uh, he died uh, very unexpectedly. But we're happy to have you here, Tricia, and Ed, and your, your son also. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the end of World War II. And we have the honor of having in our midst the only remaining major figure of that time. 1943, and I can remember it well, Senator Mikulski, I was 15 years old, and Madam Chung spoke to the House and the Senate of the United States Congress. She was the first private citizen in history to address the House and the Senate, though in a very real sense, we do not regard you as, at any point, a private citizen, uh, Madam Chung. She comes from a distinguished family. Her sister married Dr. Sun Yat-sen, the distinguished figure in Chinese history. But in that 1943 uh, speech to Congress, one newspaper reported, she took the country by charm and not by storm. And I think that is literally true. It is an honor for us to have you here, Madam Chong. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to be present with a gracious and great leader to have a sense of touching history by having you here, and also at the same time to express the deep friendship between the American people and the Chinese people. Senator Dole had to go fly to New Jersey, was here earlier, and he joins me in, and all of my colleagues join in welcoming you here at this point, Madam Chung Kai-shek. Senator Dole, Senator Simon, ladies and gentlemen, first, I would like to say that I'm happy that you remember an old friend from China who was your wartime ally. On February 18th, 1943, at the invitation of the United States Congress, I addressed both the Senate and the House. At the time, I said that I came here as a child, spent my formative years here, and stayed through college. Therefore, I will always think of America as my second home, and it is good. 
to be back home again. Allow me to refresh your memory about the years from 1937 to 1945. On July 7th of 1917, Japan launched an all-out war on China. During the first four and a half years of total aggression, China defended herself unaided and alone. Not until Japan attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, and the 77th U.S. Congress declared war against Japan, did the U.S. and China become allies. The combined effort of our two countries thus laid the solid foundation for winning the final victory of World War II in 1945. As I join you on this great historical occasion to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the ending of World War II, I cannot help but reflect upon the tragedy of that war in those years of blood and tears. Neither can I forget the moral courage evinced by both the peoples of the United States and China fighting shoulder to shoulder. Today, I would also like to take this opportunity to express my heartfelt gratitude to the people of the United States for their moral and material support extended to my country, the Republic of China. In conclusion, let me wish each and every one of you health, happiness, and su success. May God bless you one and all. Senator Akaka from Hawaii. Oh, my uh, pleasure meeting you. Yes. Thank you. I'm glad to meet you. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I met you many years ago. I heard you speak. And I've heard your husband speak. You're wonderful people. Glad to have you. Thank you. That's my daughter, Julie. What a pretty girl she is. My, my court daughter. <laughs> she looks like you. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Congratulations on this day and thank you for your What a pretty girl you are. Congressman Bob Dornan. Honored to meet you again. Met you in Beverly Hills in 1943 or Glad four. to meet you again. Good to see you.
Central. And it is. Yeah. It's an honor to meet you. Get people. Try this. Yeah. Sure, an honor to meet you. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Thank you very much. 